Hey, what's up guys? Vic here with Phone Arena and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra is the most powerful phone so far in 2021. But as you might know, Samsung actually makes two different versions of the phone for different markets. The US model is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chip, while the international version runs on Samsung's own Exynos 2100. So after running countless tests on both phones, I wanted to show you the real difference in battery life and performance speed between the two, but also dive a bit in the reasons why Samsung is even bothering making its own chip and why it has persisted with it despite failing quite a bit behind Qualcomm in the past few years. So is the new Exynos 2100 finally the one chip that would deliver equal performance to the Snapdragon? We kick this off with a battery comparison running a web browsing script on both phones with the phone scrolling up and down just like you would when you're using your phone. And at 60Hz both different versions score incredibly good results. The Exynos model dies first at 16 hours and 7 minutes after the beginning of the test and the Snapdragon model actually outlasts it by a small margin at 17 hours and 19 minutes. Now, results do vary a bit between runs, but the Snapdragon version has the slight advantage here and both are incredibly impressive. Let's also run the same test once again, but this time with the 120Hz adaptive mode enabled and the results actually don't change all that much. The Exynos once again dies first with a score of 14 hours and 43 minutes, while the Snapdragon model finishes the test with 16 hours and 32 minutes. So that's interesting, you have a very slight decline in battery life on the Snapdragon versus a bigger decline in the Exynos version, which goes to show that Snapdragon is handling the 120Hz situation a bit better and is still very slightly longer lasting, but the difference is definitely not huge. One more test, this time running the same YouTube playlist on both phones, from fully charged phones to zero, and we get a runtime of 8 hours and 52 minutes on the Exynos versus 9 hours and 39 minutes on the Snapdragon. And that's another win for the Snapdragon, but notice how tiny the gap between the two is, really not that great. Finally, we also turn to our 3D gaming battery test and actually this is the test where the 120Hz really hits the battery hard on both phones. At 60Hz, the Exynos model finishes with 8 hours and 40 minutes, while the Snapdragon outlasts it at nearly 11 hours. Now, if we just pause for a second here, notice how the gap has really widened in this gaming test, which goes on to show that the Snapdragon model has a much better control over its thermals compared to the Exynos 1. And then replaying the test fully at 120Hz, we see a massive drop on both phones, with just a bit over 5 hours on the Exynos and 5 hours and 50 minutes on the Snapdragon. So let's recap the battery scores. It was a win-win-win for the Snapdragon on all three tests, but the margin was hardly huge, and instead we see that Samsung's own Exynos model lasts an impressive amount of time for lighter activities, like web browsing in particular. Next up, we have to also take a look at performance benchmarks because it's not just about battery life. So first we're running Geekbench 5 consecutive times back to back without giving the phones time to cool down. On your screens right now you'll see the score for each of the test runs and interestingly the Snapdragon version stays rock solid with the scores showing almost no difference between runs so it definitely can handle more intense tasks without overheating. Finally, we also take an average of the 5 runs and we see just a tiny difference in favor of the Snapdragon model versus the Exynos version, but interestingly in the multi-core section of this test, the Exynos actually scores a bit higher. Next up running the Jetstream 2 test, which has some JavaScript and WebAssembly benchmarks, we're seeing practically no difference between the two. So next up we have to turn to gaming, as that's one thing many of you will be buying a flagship phone for. 
and it's the one area where any overheating issues will easily manifest. So first running one popular benchmark, which is 3D Mark Wildlife, we see a bit of a difference between the Snapdragon and the Exynos versions. The most popular benchmark for 3D gaming, however, is GFX Bench, and we get to see some notable differences there. The Snapdragon version has a 15% advantage over the Exynos model on the car chase test, which goes on to show that if you want to maintain the highest frame rates, the Snapdragon is still the superior chip, but interestingly not by a huge margin. So the short of it is that the Snapdragon model is still the all-around faster chip with longer battery life. And yes, international buyers who get the Exynos version don't quite get the same S21 Ultra phone as consumers in the US. But, and that's a big thing to remember, the difference is often negligible and it really depends on your use. In certain cases like gaming, we do notice how the Exynos struggles, but in just general use and for media consumption, those differences are far less pronounced. So why is Samsung even making Exynos chips when they're still not quite on par with Qualcomm's very best? Well, of course, there are the cost savings with having your own chip, but that's far from the only reason. Samsung is actually betting on Exynos one day matching or beating Qualcomm's Snapdragon series, and this will give it a huge advantage over any other Android phone maker and probably over Apple as well. That day has not yet arrived, but it might not be too far off either. And by the way, speaking of chips, let me finish this off with one juicy rumor floating around. Google is also said to be designing its own ARM-based mobile chips that could be ready as soon as this year and power the Pixel 6 series. So there is this huge battle for the fastest and most power efficient chip on phones and that battle might decide the way the smartphone industry looks in the next few years. Anyway, do you consider the differences between the Snapdragon 888 and the Exynos 2100 big enough for you to actually care? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed watching this video and a sub to the channel would be appreciated. My name is Vic, this is Phone Arena, and I'll talk to you in the next one.